Hey guys, I am Venkat and this is part 19 of web development with Blazor video series. In this video, we'll discuss how to bind data from a database table to a drop down list in ASP.NET Core Blazor. Another common use case is to bind an enum to a drop down list. So, we'll be discussing binding an enum as well. Now, here is what we want to be able to do. At the moment, using this data grid, we can perform CRUD operations, that is, create, read, update, and delete employees from the underlying employees database table. To add a new employee, we click on this add button and we have a new row here. And notice both department and gender columns. We have a drop down list. Similarly, even when editing a row, by the way, to edit a row, there are two options. One option is to select the row and then click the edit button and the other option is to simply click on any of the rows again notice we have the row in edit mode and both department and gender columns have a drop down list gender is an enum and the department values are coming from a database table so let's see how to bind a drop down list both to data coming from a database table and to an enum in the interest of time here's what i have done in the background i've included this new component grid edit dot razor in the pages folder and within this component i have a sync fusion data grid by the way we discussed the basics of data grid and setting it up from scratch in part four of this video series the data source for this data grid is employees property which is right here and it is this client service that calls the server side rest api retrieves the data from the database table and populates the employees property and we have this employees property set as the data source for the data grid and here are the list of columns that we are displaying at the moment in the data grid employee ID, first name last name etc so at this point if we take a look at this page in the browser we see the employee data as expected so the first thing that we want to do is enable this data grid to be able to perform crud operations now for this data grid to be able to perform crud operations we have to tell it among these columns which column is the primary key column in our case we know employee ID column is the primary key column so on the respective grid column we simply set is primary key equals true next we want to allow adding editing and deleting employee rows and we have to tell that to this data grid so for that just like how we are using this grid page settings component to specify paging options we're going to use another component called grid edit settings component to specify editing options on this component we set allow adding equals true allow editing equals true and finally allow deleting equals true next just above the data grid header we want this toolbar with these buttons add edit update delete and cancel so for that on the data grid we include toolbar property the value for this property is a new list of string here is the important bit to keep in mind this string add is the key for add button in the toolbar similarly edit string is the key for edit button so on and so forth so with all these changes in place let's run our project and take a look at the browser there we go we have the toolbar with add edit update delete and cancel buttons now before we do anything else notice in the data grid we are displaying department id values which are integers and doesn't make any sense to the end user instead we want to display the department name so for that on the grid where we are displaying the department id on this employee object we have department property which obviously returns the employee department and on that we have department name to make this work we have to tell entity framework to load employee department record as well along with the employee record and we do that in employee repository class which is present in the models folder right here it is this method that returns us the list of all employees so let's tell it to include respective departments as well so for that we specify a lambda so for each employee we want the respective department as well Notice department column name is empty and at the bottom here we also have 
an unhandled exception and if we take a look at the browser development tools the exception is object reference not set to an instance of an object basically a null reference exception and that's because when binding a complex object like department to a grid column we use a different syntax first of all we don't need this name of keyword here and we also don't need this employee dot prefix so let's get rid of that and then department dot department name we include in double quotes now we see the department name as expected and when we click this add button we have a new blank row which allows us to add a new employee and by default notice both for department and gender we have a text box what we want is a drop down list these employee departments are present in the department's database table now we have already created a rest api so if we navigate to our root application url slash api slash departments we see the list of all departments we created this rest api from scratch in part 5 of this video series so what we want to do is call this rest api and bind this list of departments to a drop down list in the interest of time in the services folder i added these two files i department service and department service these two files are very similar to i employee service and employee service basically these two services employee service and department service are client side proxy services that call our server side rest api we discussed implementing employee service in our previous videos in this series so this department service is very similar to it in the interest of time i have added these files in the background so if we take a look at i department service interface notice it's pretty straightforward we have two methods here get all departments which returns us the list of departments and get department returns a specific department by id and we have the implementation in this file department service which obviously implements the interface we have a constructor here we are injecting http client into this service using dependency injection and then we are using it to call our server side rest api endpoint api slash departments and we know this endpoint returns us the list of all departments so basically this client side service get all departments method is going to return the list of all departments and this method returns a specific department that is a department by id next in the main method in program class by the way this program.cs file is present in our client project right here so just like how we are registering our employee service with a dependency injection container we need to register our department service as well next in this grid edit razor page just like how we have this employees property we need departments property to populate this departments property with data we need to inject this department service into our razor page this is very similar to how we are injecting employee service right here and then in on initialized async method just like how we are initializing employees property let's initialize departments property as well on the department service we have get all departments call that and finally convert it to a list now when we edit a row in the data grid we want a drop down list as the edit interface for this department name column so inside this grid column let's include edit template component inside this we can include any html element we want in our case we want a sync fusion drop down list first at the top of the file let's include the required namespace for the sync fusion drop down list data source for this drop down list is this department's property. T item, that is the type of item our drop down list is working with, is department. And T value, that is the type of value. If we take a look at our department's table, the value is actually an integer. So let's specify the value type is integer. Finally, we need to specify drop down list text and value fields at this point let's actually take a look at the browser and see what we've got so far notice when we put this row in edit mode we have an exception and we can see that from the message at the bottom here and we also have the drop down list as expected 
but we don't see the department names here. We see a text that starts with Blazor PR. Basically, what's happening here is this drop down list is displaying the fully qualified name of the department object. Now, if we take a look at our project, the fully qualified name of the department class is blazorproject.shared.department. That is what is being displayed in the drop down list right here at the moment. Why is that? Well, that's because this drop down list does not know which properties it has to use as the display text and display value. We have to tell that to the drop down list. And we do that by specifying drop down list field settings. We want the display text to be department name and the value to be department ID. Now, when we put the row in edit mode, we see the drop down list as expected along with its values. But there is a small problem here. Notice for this employee, Sarah, department is payroll. And when we put this row in edit mode, we don't see her department selected. So what we want is this payroll to be selected in the drop down list. To have the employee department selected, we need to set a property here called bind value. And the value for this is we have access to an implicit parameter called context. Notice it's available even in the IntelliSense and we can typecast that to employee object type. Why employee? Well, that's because our data grid is binding to an employee object. And then on this employee object, we have department ID property. For this employee, Sarah, department is payroll. And when we put this row in edit mode, notice our department is already selected in the dropdown list. At the moment, for gender column, we still have a text box and we know gender is an enum. So let's see how to bind an enum to drop down list. Binding a drop down list to an enum is very similar to how we bind it to database data. So in the interest of time, let's make a copy of this edit template and paste it inside our gender grid column and then change the bits that are required. First of all, the data source is going to be our enum values. So we need a property for that. So just like how we have employees and departments property, let's create another property that holds all the enum values. This is going to be of type string array. And let's call this gender enum values to get all the gender enum values on the built in enum class. We have get names. And to this, obviously, we have to pass our gender enum. Our obvious next step is to specify this property as the data source for the drop down list. T item is of type string. T value is our gender enum. And even here, instead of department ID, it is gender. And here is another important point to keep in mind. When binding a drop down list to an enum, we don't need to specify drop down list field settings because the drop down list is smart enough to use the enum display text as the text field and the underlying integer as the value field. So we can remove this drop down list field settings component altogether. Notice now we have a drop down list for both the columns, department and gender. In our next video, we'll continue implementing CRUD operations in data grid. That is create, read, update, and delete. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.